Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the implementation of the COVID-19 X-ray classifier. So let's get to it. Basically, first of all, you will need to clone this repo. Uh, you can do so by copying the link and opening the terminal where you can type git clone and then paste the repo. I'm not going to do it since I um, already have it. And then you go to the folder of the repo and you can start looking at the instructions that are here. First of all, you will have to install Docker. I left the link with the instructions, also NVIDIA Docker for GPU support, since we're going to train our model on the GPU. And um, then you can open the terminal, go to the, the, the repo director, uh, directory, like I told you, and then you can build the Docker file by typing in this command. So we'll just do it, we'll build it. In my case, it was fast because I had already built it before, but for you guys, it will take um, something like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on your internet. What it, this will do is building a virtual environment that has all the dependencies, so we don't have to install anything else. All we have to install is Docker and NVIDIA Docker. Now we can run the, the Docker container. In this line, um, we'll also open some ports so that we can use... Um, um, Jupyter Lab, and we can so we can use also TensorBoard, um, and we add a shared folder in case we need to share files between our host computer and the container. So now that we're here, we'll copy one last time, and it's this one that opens the Jupyter Lab environment. So this will give us a link that we have to click. So now we go to the link, and this is our this will be our development environment where we'll, where we'll be working. First of all, we have this notebook for training. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you'll find everything in it here. So uh, here are the instructions. I left um, the data set where, from where we, the link to the data set from where we got the images. And I also left the link to the paper that you can recommend you to take a look at on ResNet. Uh, the paper is really interesting. And um, also some articles about some basic concepts that are used here, um, like cross entropy loss and stochastic gradient descent, which are really important in deep learning and in machine learning in general. And also some little explanation of overfeeding, which is the main reason why we split the data into test, train, and validation sets. And uh, like it says here at the end, we reach an accuracy of around 98%. So what we'll see about that. So first of all, we import all the libraries um, then we define which device we're using. In this case, we, since we installed NVIDIA Docker, we're supposed to be using GPU. So this will show us that we're using CUDA. That means we're using GPU. Next, we can load the data. Um, this is all pretty well commented. So um, you'll see that uh, we have uh, data transformations that are really important in order to um, make sure that we're dealing with, we're inputting the same type of data to the model. And also, it performs something called data augmentation. This, this data augmentation transformations allow us to have more variability in the data so that when we get images, new images, the model can somehow infer, uh, even in, in those new images, the characteristics that we want it to infer. Um, so we have these transformations. Then we, have, um, we define the directory where the data is contained. And we uh, define the data sets and uh, add the data transformations to it. So we have these dictionaries that have the data transformations, that have the definition of the data sets for train and testing. And we have something called data loaders, which is uh, really important to be able to load, to give batches of data to the model. That's why we define this parameter here, batch size, it's really important. That means our model will learn in batches of 16 images in this case. Um, so yeah, once we execute this line, we can see uh, here it shows us that we're dealing with two classes, mainly COVID and no COVID, which is what we're gonna try to, to classify from these images. Now we can visualize some of these images using the data loaders. Here we tell it to show us four of the images, which for random images. And as you can see, these images are uh, a little um, turned around. And that's because one of the transformations we include was uh, random rotation. 
and it and this adds a random rotation of maximum 25 degrees so we can see here how these images are rotated this has also a lot to do with the data orientation then we define the function where we train the model so this one's really important so as you will see um, our model will train through several epochs that mean each that means that it will see all the data several times so one epoch means uh, going through all the data that is in the data set. So um, in this particular case, the default value is 25, so that would mean the model will be trained uh, 25 times on the data. So um, each epoch has its own uh, training, has, it, has a validation and a training phase. So here we define, this is really important for PyTorch. Um, maybe some of you are not familiar with that. But um, yeah, I recommend you guys taking a course on this tool, which is really, really useful in deep learning and machine learning. It's uh, widely used today, probably even more than TensorFlow. So I recommend you guys to look at it. And then, um, so what we do is from the data loader, we can, uh, depending if we're doing training or validation, from the data loader, respective data loader, we get data corresponding to inputs and labels. So inputs will be images and labels will be from our data if it's COVID or not COVID. So we know it a priori from the data, which of our samples are COVID or non COVID. So that those are the labels that we have. Then um, what we're going to do is um, we use a loss criteria. We input the, well, first we would calculate with our network um, a prediction. Then we take this prediction, which at first will be really bad because our model is not trained yet and the weights are random, and we compare it with the labels. So we compare the prediction of the model with the uh, ground truth. And this, uh, we use for this, we use a criterion, which we'll see further ahead, is uh, cross entropy loss. So this allows us to compute this loss that tells us how good our model is doing. Then uh, what we do is, apply, is we apply back where propagation, which allows us to calculate the gradients of this loss respect to the parameters of the model. And this is from this gradient what allows us to implement an optimization technique that is defined here in this uh, optimizer step. So with this optimizer step takes the gradients and computes uh, an optimization step, which will update the parameters of the um, neural network and it will start doing better and better till it converges to a really good accuracy. These following lines are more related to uh, statistics. So basically the running loss, how, how the model is doing, we're doing this for, for being able to load the data and uh, we will see further to be able to watch some dashboards that show us how well the model is performing in a tool called TensorBoard. So, this is basically the core of the training process. We make an estimation, then uh, from that estimation and the ground truth data, we compute the loss uh, given by a certain criterion, which is one of the parameters of the function. And then we optimize using a certain optimization technique, which is also one of the parameters of this train model function. And we will show which are those further ahead. Um, this is, like I was saying, this is for logging the data and uh, we will see further ahead also how this looks. Uh, at the end of the training, we will save the best model in a checkpoint file. And this will allow us to load this model for, in order to be able to use it in the future for, for other images. This function, I will not go into detail, but it basically allows us to take a model and um, watch its performance on, on a number of random images. Um, we will see the results further ahead. So what we do here is we will download a pre-trained version of the model called ResNet. Uh, like I said before, I included the paper to this model. This model is widely used and has inspired a lot of models that show some of the best performance in deep learning today. Um, so what we do here is we load a pre-trained version of this model showing the torch vision that models API and um, then what we do is we redefine the fully connected part of this model. So basically 
what we're doing is changing the last layer of this model so that it is compatible with our problem, which is a two classes classification problem. So that's why we have these two here. And then um, we use this two device function that basically converts this model into a GPU compatible model because we're gonna train it on the GPU. And this is where we define what loss criterion we're using. Like I will, um, said before, this is used to calculate the loss. So we're using cross entropy. And finally, we define the um, optimizer we're using, which in this case is, S is SGD, which is short for stochastic gradient descent. I also included in the in the articles at the beginning a link to um, some articles that um, will um, show you how this is how this works and the, the basic concepts behind stochastic gradient descent, cross entropy, overfitting, and all those other concepts. So I recommend you to take a look at those. And finally, we use something uh, really a tool, really cool tool that has, Torch has, which is a learning scheduler, and this allows us to um, give some parameters that will make this learning rate dynamic. So um, the learning rate is basically how big the update steps are uh, in the weights of our model. So if we make these steps too big, it might be impossible for the model to converge. But if we make them too small, then the model will take too long to uh, converge. So that's we, why we use uh, learning schedulers that usually what they do is they train faster at the beginning with a higher learning rate and then they decrease it. Um, so yeah, finally, this, this is the last part where we execute the, the, the training. We call the function by giving it the model, the criterion we defined before, the optimizer, the learning scheduler, and we define the number of epochs. So I'm just gonna go uh, back here because I haven't executed these blocks and I'm gonna execute them. So we can see here, for example, like I said before, we use a torch vision.models API to download a pre-trained version of ResNet 34 and it downloads it and it um, assigns it to the right variable. And finally, we hit the train. So this is gonna take a little time depending on the hardware you're running it in. But as you can see, it's calculating training loss and test loss and the accuracy of the model. So in the first epoch, it already is doing uh, predictions with 87% uh, accuracy on the validation set. So after some time, you can see that uh, the model has trained and we got a, vali a validation accuracy of over 98% in one of the um, iterations. So this is really good. And um, this model was safe, so we're gonna use it for uh, inference. So we can test the model here with this function that was defined before, for example. And we can see how it, predicts, it makes a prediction and we show what the ground truth is from our data. So here it did it right, this is no COVID, no COVID, no COVID, no COVID. So as you can see, all of these predictions were correct for COVID negative cases. But, um, I also included a uh, notebook to, to perform um, evaluation, basically. Uh, I'm gonna shut down this kernel really quick. And then um, this model, the, this notebook basically implements the evaluation for this and we will, will allow us to evaluate the model on more images. So as you can see here, I'm going through more images. And again, it's, um, it's telling us what the data, what the, what the, it's making the prediction whether it's COVID-19 positive or negative. So here, for example, first we're testing all the COVID positive images we have. Here it made a mistake, as you can see. It said it was no COVID, but it was actually COVID. And it gives us the probability. It says that the probability of COVID was 30% and the probability of no COVID was 68%. So it wasn't that certain. But if we go further, we can see that in the other images, it did a pretty good guess. And in these, for example, it said COVID with a really high certainty of almost 98%. And if we go further, a lot of these images show with a really good certainty and they're all COVID. So that means that the prediction was correct. And at the end, it seems that the model only had one error. As we can see here, the accuracy on this set of images was 98%, that uh, 94%, sorry. That 5% um, error corresponds to the image it classified uh, wrongly at the beginning. 
if we go through these no COVID images, we can see how it does a really a great work. Um, no COVID with a 74% uh, certainty, no COVID again, all these are no COVID, so it's classifying them right. So basically our model did a great job in this case. Now, I would like to show you one of the tools that were implemented so that we could um, visual, visualize the performance of the model. So we're going to copy this last line that's on the readme of the repo on this terminal. When we do so, this will launch a server um, that's called the TensorBoard server. And this, what it will do will be show us the performance of the model during training. So as we see here, this is how the accuracy was increasing. And in this case, the test accuracy during the training. Uh, this is softened, so we can decrease the soft, the soft function. So basically it started with 88% uh, accuracy after the first step up, and it, you can see it increased till um, 98% almost on the 10th epoch. So these results are really nice. We can see also how the loss was decreasing, how the training accuracy also increased and how the training loss also decreased. So this, this proves that our model learned. As we can see here, we probably could have trained for a little longer and we could have had a little um, better accuracy and a smaller loss. So we could basically from this, we could go back to the training um, file and train again. That's, that's what this is showing us. Um, so basically that's everything I wanted to show you. Um, we, as, as, as I said, as I showed you, we have been able to train this, um, this model and uh, we'll get an accuracy of around 98% on our test uh, set and um, we have been able to evaluate it on new images with a really good accuracy as you can see it only did one mistake in the case of uh, the covid positive cases uh, but before i go i also included this file so as you saw in the in the notebook i i used a pre-trained version that i downloaded basically from torch uh, vision models api but we could also implement our own model. And what I've done here is I've included code that uh, basically implements the same model, ResNet, from scratch. So instead of downloading it, we could just use this model. The downside here is that these weights are not pre-trained and we will have to load the pre-trained weights from, also we will have to also download the pre-trained weights and pass them to the model. But um, basically this file is included here and I will show you really quick how it works. So basically what we do here is we can, first we'll have to install this tool, it's called Torch Summary, so that we can watch the model. Um, I have to restart the kernel for that. Sorry. And then I'm going to install this tool then um, I'm going to import from this uh, Python file. I'm going to import all the classes and functions that are defined there. And finally, I'm going to build or to uh, make an instance of a ResNet 18 model in this case. Here, this parameter is uh, how many channels the images have. And this 1000 is how many classes we're classifying. For our case, it will be two, but it also, it works with any number. And this means that we're using color images. So let's see the result. So this will show us all the layers that uh, are part of this model. So we can see all the layers here. If we were to do it the way that was implemented that I showed you before, we would use the Torch Vision Models uh, API and we would simply download this model. So we can do the exact same thing. And um, if you compare this downloaded model to the one we defined in the resnet.py file, they're exactly the same. But in this case, 
we would be able to play with this architecture a little bit and uh, change it in, at our convenience and maybe we can get even better results. So um, that's everything I wanted to show you. Uh, I hope you liked this quick tutorial and I will, you're free to clone the repo, check it out and come to me with answers, with questions if you have them. Thank you.